So I'm Kaylin. I moved to Mexico by myself when I was 22 and I'm about to move to Colombia and I get a lot of questions asking How do you move to another country? Like tell me <laughs> So I'm gonna break it down for you So you pick where you want to live. You should probably pick somewhere safe somewhere with a lower cost of living than where you're coming from so it's not super expensive or if it's got a higher cost of living then it's just an amazing high quality place with like higher wages so you know wherever you want to pick um, you can go to nomad list and they break the cost of living and other factors of life down so pick your place and when you pick the place look at the visa requirements so with Mexico you can have a visa for six months and you just come spend six months and then you can go back home visit your family and then come right back and get another six months um, with places like Australia they have like working holiday visas so you can literally work um, while you're in Australia um, a lot of places have like digital nomad visas um, Portugal has one Spain I think like a lot of Caribbean countries are getting them um, so yeah just look up the requirements usually if you're from like a first world country it's pretty easy to get a visa to go anywhere next up is saving money you could show up in any country with like two thousand dollars and be gucci it depends on working and like what your job's gonna be i'll talk about that later so you should obviously downgrade when you move abroad my car is paid off because it's a 2005 honda accord so i didn't need to like sell my car i just left it at my family's um but if you have like a really expensive car that you're paying for get rid of it um <laughs> just sell it if you're really planning on like you're committing to this you're booking it out of the u.s sell things um you don't need a lot of stuff i made the mistake when i moved to england um i brought a bunch of heels because i just imagined myself i was like oh when i'm in london girl i'm gonna have like a bunch of heels like what i don't wear heels I've never worn heels. I literally packed a suitcase full of heels because I was like, yeah, I'm going to like wear heels. I did not. So then I was like, just had a suitcase full of heels and it was heavy and I brought too much stuff. So really bring stuff. Like if you haven't worn a shirt ever, you're thinking in your head, you're like, oh yeah, when I move to Colombia, mm, this, this shirt's going to be my favorite shirt. It's going to be my shirt. You're never going to wear that shirt. You didn't wear the shirt in Missouri. You're not going to wear it in Colombia. Leave the shirt at home. Um, <laughs> next, <laughs> finding a job. This is like what everyone freaks out about, but there are many options. So you can have a remote job. That's what I did when I was in Mexico. I was a social media strategist for a legal nonprofit and I got my job on LinkedIn. I studied communications in school and then had a bunch of social media internships throughout college. So it was pretty like standard. Um, but that's not the only way to get a remote job. I have friends who did not go to college and they are chilling at their house working remote, getting paid like around the same that I got paid. Um, and they found jobs on weworkremotely.com or remote.co. Um, so you can look on there and they like, obviously it's only remote jobs. Um, and there, there's something for everyone, seriously. There's like jobs that don't require a college degree and you get paid like 19 an hour that can just keep going up, which if you're living like New York City, that's nothing. But if you're living pretty much anywhere else in the world, so you can also freelance. So like since my old job was social media strategy, I'm planning on freelancing. Do like Upwork, Fiverr, Contra and like set up a profile there. If you're a copywriter, a content writer, a virtual assistant, any of those things, you can freelance if you're an artist um, doing like animation, stuff like that. You can freelance. You can go on World Packers. There's so many cool opportunities on there. I have a friend who ran the social media and she, she doesn't have like real experience. <laughs> and um, because like the jobs on there, they don't, you don't have to have experience. They're like, you're doing it for free basically. And you're just, they're providing you with a place to stay and food and maybe like a small stipend or something. And so you could, it's actually a good way to build your resume, but you can do like social media management for a hotel in Croatia and stay at the hotel, get your meals for free and just like post about the hotel. 
and then you're literally on an island in Croatia. Um, that's just, it's a traveler's dream, seriously. Like everyone uses world packers. I know this girl, she worked at a hostel in Greece. Just living on this like hostel at Greece and like on this island. So that's like a really good way especially like if you're young, you're free, you're more, you can go wolfing if you like to farm. Basically, you just like live on a farm and work, but it'll be like a farm in France <laughs> and you're like learning French. That's a good way to learn a language also because you can be like living with like French people. You can become an au pair if you have like babysitting experience. Basically, that's like a nanny and you don't have to live with the family. I have a friend who did that in Mexico City and they got her an apartment and then she just like play with the kids for a few hours a day and like go to museums and <laughs> roam around the city. You can get like a work holiday visa in Australia and like their minimum wage is like $30. So you'll be a waitress in Australia making $30 an hour. Um, so a lot of people have done that and like saved up money. This was like one of my favorite options is teaching English abroad. You can do this. There's the JET program in Japan. There's the North America uh, language and cultural assistance program which is um, I've had like a bunch of friends do that I applied got in but didn't end up doing it but um, it's a program that you teach English in Spain they like you get your housing with everything and then they pay you like a thousand dollars a month but it lasts you trust me like that is one program you do want to have a bit of savings when you get there so in case you want to like travel around Europe um, but the like thousand dollars a month because the rent is like 400 bucks so it's good, it's good. Um, and there's teaching English program. There's a similar program to that one in France. So there's lots and lots and lots of ways you can make money and lots of ways you can work. Finding housing. This is something that everyone stresses out about. People are like always in my comments on TikTok and they're like, where am I gonna live? Ah! It is no worries. Like in only America is the one country in the world where it's difficult to find housing. Everywhere else, don't get a house, like don't find housing before you even go there. Show up, get an Airbnb for like a week or two, and join those like Facebook housing groups like uh, Lisbon Housing. Dude, you're gonna find an apartment in five minutes. Someone's gonna be like, it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be the perfect location that you want. It's going to be like the perfect price that you want. And they're gonna be like, I'm subletting my apartment in Lisbon for the next six months, boom. You have a place to live like and so get to Lisbon in this full scenario get to Lisbon and then set reach out to these people in these Facebook housing groups be like oh can I like, come by see the apartment um, and go tour the apartment and if you like it you can move in or this is something that I like I don't use Facebook so when I went to Mexico City I initially was like I went to visit first and I stayed in an Airbnb and I just met people. I was like, hey, is there a WhatsApp group? And this expat girl, she was like, yeah, there is. There's a housing WhatsApp group and then a regular like expat WhatsApp group. I got in both WhatsApp groups and there was tons of like housing options. So you'll be fine. Facebook, WhatsApp, just get there and start talking to people. Talk to your Airbnb host. I've had friends who do this. They just like the Airbnb that they're staying. So they talk to the host and they're like, hey, can I pay you $700 a month and stay here? And the host is like, yes, because now they have, they don't have to clean the place all the time. They don't have to constantly be like, oh my God, I'm getting new guests. I hope they're not psychos. They know you, they trust you. They see how you're like treating the place. Boom, you can live there. There are so many options. You will not be homeless. Like. That is the least of your worries moving abroad. You're not gonna be homeless. Language. Try your best to speak the language. Learn, use Duolingo or... <laughs> um, there's actually things out there better than Duolingo. I'll, I'll leave them below. But um, try your best to learn and don't be scared because people honestly think it's cute that you're trying to speak their language. They really do. Like In your head you think that they're gonna be like, ew, <laughs> But I swear, I've spoken like the most messed up Spanish and they're like, <laughs> aww. Like they're encouraging me and they're like, actually it's this. But like, you know, they, they think it's cute, endearing. The only people I've seen who don't like when other people speak their language is the French. But literally everyone else likes when you speak their language and they're gonna like encourage you and help you learn and try to accommodate you. Also, travel and credit card tips. The girl who's doing my hair actually asked me about this. Um, so, 
get a travel credit card. My favorite is the Capital One Venture one and you get 40,000 um, points instantly and it has no, what is it called? Those annual fees, no annual fee. This sounds like an ad, but it's, it's not. Um, there's no annual fee, so I like that card because I don't want to pay $100 a year. But I also have the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which is $100 a year, but it's worth it because you get like a sign-on bonus. You sign on. If someone refers you, like I can leave my referral links below if you want to check out these cards. But if someone refers you, you instantly get like 20,000 points. Then if you spend like a certain amount of money in the first three months, which you will because you have to pay your rent and spend money, um, then you get... 100,000 points, which is $1,500 worth of miles. So like literally right now, I could decide to go to Indonesia tomorrow and not have to pay for it at all. Slay. Like that is, I know I have that power at any moment. Every time things get rough, I'm like, I can just leave. <laughs> Let me get my credit card points. I have like almost 200,000 credit card points. And also when you spend, you get points. So like, let's say you get food, you'll get like three times the points on what you just spent. So credit cards are really worth it because it's just like free money. And if you really want to travel debit card, like when you want to take out money at the ATM, you should get the Charles Schwab one. I'll link it below. Um, I didn't have this for years, so I would always just be using my Wells Fargo debit card and spending like $5 every time I wanted to take out money. And when I got the Charles Schwab one, they pay you back. So any ATM fees, you get paid back. So I'll be in Costa Rica just like taking out money. It's, it's amazing. It's the best. Um, and you don't have to keep all your money in the Charles Schwab thing. Like I have it set up with my Wells Fargo. So I'll be like, oh, I want to put $500 on my Charles Schwab instantly can do that with my Wells Fargo. Um, okay, financial literacy, I don't, <laughs> but seriously, these are, these are the biggest tips I have and I've been to 22 countries. Next, this is just like a tip. Thinking that moving abroad is going to fix all of your mental health problems. Like if you have BPD and ADHD in Missouri, like you're gonna have those same problems in Colombia. Or just thinking that it's going to like reinvent yourself just because you've moved. Like if you wanna reinvent yourself, go right ahead, slay, I love that for you. But that's something you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to develop the discipline to change. Like no matter where you go, there you are. You're still there. Um, so you're gonna have to put in the work to you know reinvent yourself or be your best you but I totally believe you can do it. Don't be scared, meet people, be social. Even if you're a little bit of an introvert, the knowing people is the most important thing about moving abroad. Having that support system is going to get you through everything. And all you need to do is make one friend, okay? Just one, literally. Once you make one friend, you've got a bunch. That friend will introduce you to their friends, will introduce you to their friends. That's something really magical. Um, about life really so just make one friend i love you guys i believe in you guys um leave any comments if you have any questions please like this video if you liked it and i will see you guys next week bye mm -hmm.